good evening and we can continue now having uh, our outlook uh, uh, to the javascript language uh, so we enter the part two of our uh, overview of the language as i said um, and today we'll uh, uh, discover or study uh, some of the most important parts of the language so we the, the first lecture was quite easier because it gave us an idea about the syntax uh, and uh, or the basic type system how they work uh, in, in js uh, right now we'll dig uh, deeper into the most uh, particular uh, say structure of the language and uh, probably the class will be split in two videos because it's uh, to avoid uh, becoming too long hmm? okay so first of all objects uh, javascript is uh, uh, object oriented programming a program that uh, runs on objects uh, and every value is an object we saw that uh, or nearly every value we saw that we had uh, some primitive types uh, remember it's a uh, number and uh, um, boolean and string are primitive types uh, and also undefined and null uh, but uh, uh, we then have uh, uh, object types uh, that cover for everything else hmm? and so objects are a key uh, glue uh, component uh, in all the uh, javascript language my first warning is uh, forget about uh, what you know or at least partially about what you know uh, from other object-oriented programming languages like java uh, in some object-oriented programming languages like for example java or c++ uh, you cannot have any object without a class in javascript objects and classes are different concepts okay you may have uh, an object and you can declare an object without even declaring a class to which that belongs okay so we must it's a really an object oriented program is not a class oriented programming if i can say so so the the real uh, core of the language is the uh, object type and it doesn't mean that uh, we so we, we should not translate uh, what we uh, already know about other object oriented uh, languages uh, directly into uh, js because it won't apply uh, always so the syntax uh, uh, in many cases will uh, look similar but the the, the, the meaning uh, and the semantics will be different uh, and so usually normally objects are just created on the fly you don't need to, to declare a class uh, to create an object you just create the objects you may have functions that create objects you don't need classes and instantiations and constructors there are classes in javascript we'll see them later but there are some sort of an advanced construct you can use uh, objects right away and then classes need a bit more planning if you need to, if you need to use them in js uh, objects are dynamic uh, so uh, the set of properties or methods uh, that uh, object for uh, as uh, processes doesn't uh, uh, is, is not fixed at the at the moment of creation uh, you can add a new property you can delete a new property you can redefine it and also for methods any time in the life cycle of the object so even objects that were born identical maybe were constructed in the same way with the same attributes uh, well during the execution of the program may change the structure may grow and may um, have new attributes uh, uh, available for them there is there are no access control methods so you don't don't expect uh, to have to discuss about public uh, private and protected and something like that uh, because usually everything is accessible if you have the reference to the object you can always get uh, the um, the properties of, of the object itself we will see uh, some protection mechanism later by combining functions and objects uh, uh, together uh, but uh, it, they are more on the visibility rather than on the real access control and the strange thing is that uh, there is no difference between properties and methods so usually coming from java for example you have properties which are variables and methods that are completely different they are uh, functional objects uh, functions basically uh, here functions in javascript i will see them in detail today uh, are a special kind of objects and no, no more no less so the uh, any property of an object may be an, a value property or may be a function property in that case we call that a method if you want to use that that term that terminology that doesn't really apply to js okay so let's forget about what you already know about the objects of course uh, we will uh, reuse uh, the notions uh, about the object oriented programming in general but not how it fits into a specific language so for js uh, an object is just a 
uh, a container of a collection of properties so uh, an object is a uh, variable uh, that points to a, a collection that takes together a set of properties and every property is uh, uh, composed of a key or name and a value so for example we have uh, we're creating an object point it's not a class it's just an object that has two properties the first property is as name x and value 2 and the second property as a, a name y and value 5. Hmm? we see that an object is uh, is not an array where the, all the elements are in a row it's uh, a structure where you have different uh, fields uh, properties slots uh, you can call them in different ways uh, the, the, the correct name would be properties which have a name so property x as current value 2 property y is current value 5 and all together the object uh, is just a compact representation of that uh, if i see it like this it looks like more a, a structure no? a struct uh, a struct in in the c language for example uh, and of course uh, an object may contain uh, um, different uh, uh, properties of different types so for example we have properties of type string and property of type integer is the same you just define the property that you want huh? this syntax is a very uh, uh, simple and short term syntax for uh, creating an object and initializing it so creating an object means we have the the braces that delimit objects so remember the square brackets delimit uh, uh, arrays as we saw last time and the braces the curly braces delimit objects introduce objects and the objects are just declared as a comma separated list of properties in this way hmm. uh, we can have a comma at the end if we want it, it's off the last one is optional may be present or absent and in every in, uh, in in every item we have uh, the name and the value of the property so we are the creating a new object here with the open uh, curly brace and we are initializing the object by putting some of the properties already inside that object um this the syntax for object literal so constants of type object uh, is uh, a comma separated list uh, as i just said and the name could be uh, just reported like that or reported in double co or in, in quotes as a string so uh, maybe an identifier or a string the two forms are more or less equivalent uh, when they are applicable we see the rule in a second so basically these properties and values are the two aspects to have also uh, of the of an object a property are just the strings uh, you cannot have there are keys so they must be unique you cannot uh, you can't have du duplicate properties or duplicate keys uh, they can be created when we initialize the object like we did here we create some values for for the properties some names uh, or we can add them later uh, by using an assignment we just uh, we'll see in the next slide uh, how we can just add the new property to an object uh, just, just by using it and assign it or we can delete uh, a property that was already created uh, with an operator that is called delete uh, delete with the name of the property it's uh, something that will will not happen very often but uh, it can be done so uh, just to to show that there's a dynamic set of properties the names so a set of, uh, of, uh, of identifiers uh, represented as strings the values of uh, an object properties are any kind of javascript value uh, as always as in the language the value is just a reference here and there to a primitive type integer string uh, so number of string or maybe a reference to another object uh, so the re these references are stored inside the objects and uh, in the case where the value is, uh, um, is structured, so it's another object, it's another array or whatever, the object will be stored outside. And uh, as a particular case of the, of the previous one, some uh, property values may be functions. So there is nothing specific on the property itself, on the key itself, it's just the value that happens to be a function. Uh, let's see uh, an, another example here where uh, we have uh, uh, defined uh, an object uh, on the left uh, here with uh, uh, one two three four properties and uh, of primitive types strings and number 
and a fifth property uh, of a structure type so it's an array in this case and so we see that the object uh, the object uh, has five fields one two three four five the fifth one is a structure type so the object itself doesn't contain the array the array is an object by itself so it lives in its, in its own space and the object will just contain the reference to the array hmm? and uh, um, okay uh, as we as we see that uh, the, the the reference to this array may be also be used uh, extracted and used for other uh, other variables uh, uh, freely we can access the properties of an object in two ways one with the dot notation book dot author or the second with the bracket notation book square bracket author in uh, as a string hmm, as a string constant value you can use both uh, but there is a, um, a limitation that uh, uh, in some cases the name of the property may not be a legal identifier in javascript so for example if the name of the property is my title with the space inside this cannot be a, an identifier and so this synt the syntax with a dot can't work no? it would be book dot my space title and this space will break uh, the parsing of the of the statement so uh, if uh, the property name is not a valid js identifier then you must use the bracket notation both both for reading and for writing the property if in the other case the um, name of the property in this case title is a valid identifier so it begins with a letter only contains letters and numbers and underscores and so on then you may have the choice you may use both forms they are totally equivalent hmm? so book dot author here and book uh, bracket author are exactly the same it's just a matter of, of taste basically so uh, the square bracket syntax looks like uh, an array access so it looks like uh, uh, objects uh, are a sort of arrays indexed by strings uh, instead of being arrays indexed by numbers mm -hmm. you can think uh, also in this way so in some cases when you want to store some sort of dictionary structures where you have a key and a value and you want to store the keys you can may, you just may have one big object in which you use the keys uh, the names of the properties as the key and and uh, the value can maybe any type of object uh, the only constraint is that the keys the property names must be strings okay so in that case you can you have a very quick way of creating an associative array if you need to do something more complex of course uh, there are types like maps and dictionaries available in java libraries hmm? um, creating a property is very easy because you just need to assign that so if i'm assigning a number to the property telephone of an object person assuming that this object has already been created so it may already contain some properties if the telephone property already exists on that object we are changing the value if the property does not exist it's not an error but the property will be, will be created in this moment so at any time you can create a new property onto an object just by assigning a value to that if you don't need the property anymore you can have the delete statement uh, uh, to remove that property it will not delete uh, the object it will not uh, uh, just erase the value uh, it will really delete the presence of the of the um, of the property itself uh, the fact that we have uh, properties as strings uh, may also allow us to do some uh, uh, dynamic access to the property names so we may have uh, of course we have to use the the bracket notation and maybe we, we can think of having a computed uh, property so address one address two address four could be a way of creating many properties with computed names hmm? uh, i personally don't like it very much because it may create, create some sort of a confusion in this case why, why don't you use an array just indexed by i or use a, a more powerful data structure uh, but mm, there's nothing in the language that prevents you for creating dynamically name, the names of the properties of course in this case you must use the brackets because you have an, a string expression to index uh, the object 
is not a string constant or a string identifier and uh, in this case you should be uh, aware of a uh, uh, small uh, warning uh, or if you use the brackets always use the quotes around the string so maybe single quotes or double quotes so JavaScript doesn't care uh, in this case you are extracting um, uh, the property title from the an object called book mm -hmm. but if we forget the quotes here and we happen to write book title write that in the like the, the example below what is happening is this title is uh, interpreted as an expression so javascript will seek is there any variable called the title in the scope uh, uh, in uh, available in the scope of the, of the program at this moment if there is available uh, for example there is a title called author hmm? uh, because maybe a few lines before a totally unrelated variable that happens to be called title as a value then of course uh, the, the current value of the string will be used to index the book okay so um, it, we may do that on purpose so we may have a, a parameter that will choose which property we extract it's good might it, but it might be an error on our side uh, we just forgot the quotes hmm? and it's not a syntax error it may be a runtime error when uh, the the ver if the variable title is not available no it's not defined there no the variable that is really defined in this way so in that case it will be a runtime error because the the, the property uh, will doesn't exist it's not really an exception it will just return undefined because you are accessing an undefined property and the program will continue so uh, you will get errors later on in the execution so be uh, be aware of this uh, prob uh, possible uh, problem and as we were saying uh, uh, if a property is not defined if you attempt to access this property well if you attempt to write a property which is not defined you are just creating it if you are trying to access in by reading a property that doesn't exist uh, it will just return undefined you know what the predefined the predefined value called undefined and so what can we do we we should uh, check before accessing so uh, we have book.author and uh, uh, we must be sure that this is defined or not and so we may check if a book is not undefined and book.author not undefined then we can access the attribute surname of author of book this is an example of nested objects objects inside objects there are not, there's nothing strange about that uh, or uh, a lot of people use the shortcuts since the uh, undefined is one of the uh, falsy values in javascript uh, it means that it will evaluate to false in every boolean expression and it will evaluate to true uh, in uh, um, uh, otherwise uh, uh, if, if this is if it's different from undefined so this uh, sequence of end operation means uh, if a book is trueish so it's not undefined and uh, this is not undefined then return the right one so uh, the end will always return the the right argument if the first argument is true mm -hmm. so is a the semantics is the same the second one is a shorter and maybe is also clearer once we understand how it works uh, usually when we uh, access objects uh, we know which property we want we know which property are in a given object but since uh, JavaScript objects are dynamic, uh, maybe it happens that we don't know exactly which properties uh, are present in this specific object. So imagine we want to browse through all the properties, have a look at them, enumerate them, and so on. So there are methods for getting the list of all the properties of an object. And in particular, there is a special form of the for statement, for in. Uh, for a variable a in an object will iterate once per every property in this case we'll iterate twice one for the property x and the second time for the property y and uh, the, the variable a will assume the name of the property so the string x and the string y hmm? uh, in this case uh, there, we have an object with three properties and uh, by printing the property in the book in the object we get uh, the name of these three properties so the prop is the name of the properties and we are using 
the uh, bracket syntax with a string variable hmm? uh, like we saw before because prop now is a variable that contains the name of a property and so we can access the book with the name of the property specified by a variable it's a bit indirect huh? it's a bit uh, the first sight uh, may become complex but uh, it's, uh, it's totally linear once we understand that um, just remember in is for objects for property of objects of is for arrays so last time last week we saw four of statements <coughs> that, that would either iterate over all the elements of an array don't confuse of with in hmm? like i always do uh, there is also there are also methods for extracting uh, the keys uh, or the entries uh, of an object for example object.keys uh, returns an array uh, or with the name of all the properties so actually we were iterating one two three the, with, among these three so the three values of prop will be listed uh, i only put two for for the sake of brevity uh, will be listed in an array so if you want to have, to have an array with all the keys uh, we just call the keys methods keys or names if you want to have an array with all the couples uh, key value and then key value so it's an array of arrays uh, the outermost array is the list of uh, properties uh, the innermost arrays are the couples of the pairs of name and value of each property so you can extract an object and convert it into an array format if you want if you need it and then you can maybe iterate over the entry so it's a very similar to the entries of an array that will return the, the pairs of index and value here it returns the pairs again of index keys and values uh, the difference is that the keys are strings uh, and in y in an array they are integers uh, copying objects uh, so if i want to copy an object uh, the the problem that we had already with the uh, uh, arrays is the same if we just copy uh, an object name into a reference new variable we are just creating an alias so an another reference to the same object if we really want to copy to create a new copy of an object uh, the there is an assign method so object.assign so assigned as a method on the object predefined class um, that can be uh, used for this purpose the assign method it's a, it's a, it's a strange syntax it takes two objects as a, as a parameter uh, the, the first one is the target and the second one is the source it copies basically it copies all the properties from the source object onto the target object this means that if the target object is an empty one it's an empty object a new empty object which whose syntax is very simply open and close the brace like we did here so we are taking all the properties from the object book and we copy them into this object that is starting as an empty object so i create an empty object with zero property and i copy all the prop i iterate over the properties of book and i will copy the first property into the new object the second property into the new object property composed of names and value the full property and then uh, the assign method will return the uh, the target object so the job the object that we just create that you, we just modified after uh, the assignment so we are creating an empty object adding attributes and returning this new object mm -hmm. uh, in the simple case the assign uh, method can be used to copy an object but uh, into uh, an empty one but if the first one was already uh, and ha already had some properties was already an existing object then i would merge the properties i'm adding new properties onto an, an existing object hmm? it may be dangerous maybe but uh, uh, just the assigned method that um, that be, uh, behavior hmm? uh, just remember that even the assigned method only makes uh, uh, a shallow copy hmm? so let's see what i mean I created two objects uh, one is a book uh, with two properties author and pages uh, and the second object with uh, uh, study so I'm studying the topic JavaScript using this book as a source hmm? so we see that the book object is here it's an object there and the study object is this one where the first property is a primitive type JavaScript the second property is an object value 
and so we'll point to the existing object when we say source uh, um, column book uh, means that uh, the source property is assigned the value of the variable book uh, and the variable book is a reference to this object so we are copying the reference what happens if we create a new study object study 2 is a new object uh, obtained by copying the study object so what happens that uh, here uh, below that study 2 will copy all the properties from study so JavaScript, which is a primitive type, will be replicated. Uh, the source, which is a reference type, will be replicated again. So we have a reference here to that object. So we are copying all the values of this object. We are duplicating the values of these objects. We are not duplicating the second level object that may be included. So if we have another object, we, if we had an array, they will be uh, they will not be copied, but they will be shared. Okay, so this is a shallow copy It's not a deep copy because it doesn't go farther than the first step We can have a zero copy just an alias or a shallow copy just by copying the properties We cannot go farther uh, in, with uh, automatic ways mm -hmm. Just be aware of that if some of your properties are structured like objects arrays or functions Then they will not be replicated. So you are sh you are sharing them. So if I'm changing study to dot source dot pages then also study dot source dot pages will be changed because it's the same object um, as i said uh, the merge uh, the assign uh, method can also be used to to merge some values uh, target object uh, source object we can also add add uh, we always with the same with the sign call uh, add new properties we want them mm -hmm. so for example we are adding a property title.js to an existing book so we have a target object here and a source object there this source object is a constant so we are adding a, new, a property to book so in this case we are modifying book we see the book now has a new uh, attribute which is called title and uh, we uh, the, the return value book 2 is the same as book so uh, the return value of assign is always the, the target object just remember in this case the target object will be modified so we are modifying the object we are not creating a new one um, and we can also mix the two approaches so we create can create a new object copy an existing object properties into that new object and then add additional properties onto that new object so this may be what we want we create a book two object that contains all the copies uh, of all the properties in object book plus uh, some additional property mm -hmm. so it's quite versatile for transferring properties from one object to another and creating new objects and so on um, in the future mm, es9 so we decided that in this core we would follow mm, more closely es6 ex6 as a javascript version there is a much more uh, useful uh, syntax with, with the spread operator like we already saw with the with the, with the um, with arrays with, that we can create a copy of an array by spreading its value of a new array the same will apply to objects so it's a very uh, nice syntax and very easy to use syntax but unfortunately it's not available uh, on all the uh, runtimes on all the engines only if you enable uh, the the javascript level es9 and, f and following hmm. okay so that will be uh, some syntax that we'll use in the future uh, another uh, operation on, on object properties is uh, knowing whether a property exists uh, and we have the in operator it's a boolean and that returns a boolean that will tell me whether this property string is belongs to this object book so author in book is true if I delete book.author, then the author in book will become false hmm? uh, after the deletion. And um, yeah, so uh, just remember that you, it's, it's some like uh, uh, searching for a string into the entries array. Hmm? Just remember that uh, it only works in, only works with objects. If you try it with the um, uh, with arrays, it doesn't work. Okay, you must, must use, for example, find or index of uh, to find an element uh, because in, in would not look into the values of the array, 
but it would look into the properties of the object v that represents an array and these properties for example are the length of the array hmm? and so it, uh, it's not applicable to arrays in this case it's applicable to objects that may contain properties okay uh, creating objects is easy as we saw the preferred method is always to just create them with a uh, with a literal or an empty literal if we want to create uh, an empty object and then we uh, want to add the new um, with new properties to them uh, there are other methods like uh, the object constructor which is not very recommended uh, or the create method uh, which, which is only just the same as uh, using the literal so there's no real advantage in using these longer methods or if you want to have some intelligence some more logics in creating uh, the, the object you can also create an object through a function that can be is called the constructor function so a, a function whose goal is to create a new object again it's a function it's not a class huh? uh, the objects are just created by normal uh, constructs uh, we'll see the function in a moment but uh, um, the syntax is very easy we can you, you just define a function and uh, we may take some parameters and then you can assign some properties to a sort of a this object uh, and uh, and that's it you don't need even to return anything from this function and uh, when you call this function with the new operator it will create a new object and will uh, uh, assign to this object so it will run the function and will uh, let's say assign to the this keyword the reference to the new object so i create new will create a new object and then we call the car function by uh, substituting the new object that has just been created by new to the this keyword and so we are adding the property make to the new object adding the property model to the new object adding the property this to the new object and this new object will be returned and we can use it so it's a way of creating an object if we want it if we the creation logic is more complex than just putting some values there okay so we can use a a, a, a constructor function or we can create an empty object and then uh, add some well there uh, add some properties with a sign later so there are many ways of doing that of course okay so uh, objects are, are quite easy hmm? are quite the basic uh, structure here in, uh, in javascript while uh, uh, the full power of, of objects will uh, will be um, a more evident more apparent when we combine that with functions hmm? functions uh, are the cornerstone of javascript i would say hmm? uh, and they, they they start simple but they really are very, very powerful and they, be, they can be combined in very powerful ways with other functions with arrays and especially with objects so the combination of functions and objects will give you um, really many uh, say many different programming patterns that we need to learn hmm? not all of them are uh, intuitive the first time okay let's start functions uh, like we said is one of the most important elements in javascript uh, syntactical is very easy we just have a function declaration with a block of code and that will be the body of the function like in any other programming language that i know of uh, function can accept parameters can return uh, one value with a return statement uh, I say one value but actually we can create an object and return the object so actually it's very easy to return also multiple values and the important part is that functions are objects like any other object so once I have a function I can use the reference to the function to assign it to a variable to pass that reference to a function to a, another function uh, return a function as a value of another function and so on maybe be some some tricky stuff with function uh, references okay uh, and this is where uh, the dynamicity of javascript comes into play and uh, enables us to create very complex structure with very little syntax there are three ways mm, of defining of declaring a new function this is the classic one function keyword name of the function list of parameters body of the function very easy hmm? uh, we don't have any return type because uh, uh, we don't need to declare whether we turn something or the type because we know that javascript doesn't enforce types uh, to identifiers only to values so it returns the value that we return and uh, 
whatever this value is will be the, the type mm, of, the, of the function return value and also we don't have to list the types of parameters it's very easy uh, so for example we have a function square that does, uh, takes one parameter x and does uh, some computation returns y and we can call the function like we expected uh, with the name of the function and the parameters in, uh, in, um, in parentheses of course uh, while the function is in execution so if i stop the execution right here i will see two nested uh, uh, um, scopes one is the scope uh, inside uh, the function they are called frames in the inspector one is the scope inside the function that will sh show the values that are accessible to the function x which is a parameter y which is a local variable the variable declared with let uh, are, are scoped within the, the, um, the braces variable declared with var are scoped within the whole function uh, but in both cases they are only visible from inside the function and the return value which is the value ready to be returned uh, by the function in the global frame so for example after the execution at the end of the program what we have is that n is equal to six of course and we also have the variable square you see that square it was a function we declared it as a function but uh, in the it appears like a normal variable with the, all the other variables square this name here is just one variable one reference uh, to a variable of type or to a value of type function so it's an, the function is an object like another object with special properties but it's just an object um, some more details of course the parameters are a list of parameter names separated by a comma we can have a, a default value if you want so if we don't specify all the parameters uh, some of them may be omitted and in the function declaration we can declare the, the default value all parameters are passed by value but remember that these are objects so passing a value by object uh, passing an object by value means uh, copying the reference so in the case a parameter of a function is uh, the actual parameter is an object we are copying the reference to that object and so that object the object inside the function will be shared with the color uh, with the object in the color scope so we are actually uh, passing a reference so it's a sort of a, ref um, a call by reference uh, uh, the effect is a call by reference of, of object values mm. for primitive values we are just passing a copy of the value uh, in some cases some parameters that are not passed and don't have any default set uh, will get the value undefined so i can declare a function that can receive maybe seven parameters i only pass three of them two of the and two more may have a default value and the re and the, the end uh, the remaining two will have no value so it's not a, a syntax error to provide a smaller number of parameters uh, and so we have we may have a, a very mm, simple sort of polymorphisms polymorphisms to functions that where uh, we can pass a lower number of arguments than, than is ex expected so and the function can can check uh, which parameters were really passed uh, uh, by checking whether they are undefined or not and uh, again uh, there's a shortcut uh, usually we use the or operator by saying okay p if, if p is uh, uh, falsy so undefined then we use the default value if p is not falsy it's a real object then we use p as a value so it's a way of uh, setting the default very easily in javascript um, there is uh, but i won't spend time on that i will leave you the slide uh, that will describe how to create a function that receives a, um, a variable number of parameters so you don't know you want to expect many parameters but you know don't know how many and so you can spread uh, all the extra values into an array value that can, we can access like a normal array mm. but it's a sort of an advanced topic here that was the classic definition then we have uh, uh, the a function expression so a, a different way of defining a function it's just different in the syntax mm. it's actually the same thing uh, the keyword function is not only a keyword for creating a new um, function 
but it, it can also be used as part of an expression you see that function uh, it returns a value there's an equal there so i can create with the function uh, keyword a new object of type function and this object will return will be returned and will be stored into a variable so we are defining a variable that holds a value of type function this is called function expression because it's in the context of an expression so the expression starts with functions function and ends with the closing brace so this is the one atom of the expression and uh, uh, is um, it's evaluated so evaluating this expression will create a new object of type function and will return the reference to that object we may we have two forms of this function expression uh, one is the simplest one and the second one may also additionally provide a name to this function expression this name is actually not used during uh, the, the program you cannot call the function with this name you can only call the function through its reference but it may be useful maybe when you are debugging for example so that you can it will show you also the function name in the debug in this case it's an anonymous function expression it will create a function but this function doesn't have any name i have the name of the reference that you use to refer to that function hmm? so it's a bit of a strange thing uh, but it works in the same way so for example we have the comparison of a function declared in a classical way with a function declared in uh, with a function expression so we create the function here and we return it and store the reference to the function into a variable you see for the visualization that they are exactly the same it's one variable called cube that refers to an object of type function this one and a variable of type square that refers to an object of type uh, function this one is the same hmm? uh, we, we may, you may define it in this way or in that way but the, the, the reality is that uh, they really are the same type of object this can be useful because it is a part of an expression so the expression can grow and so this function can also be nested inside of a much more complex expression like we will see um, so this, this expression is uh, uh, so the first type uh, the, first, the first time where we really see that functions uh, are objects because all, all of the expression just returns a new uh, a new object and this object can be used as any other object you can store it into a, um, uh, an array you can store it into an object you can store you can uh, use a function reference as a parameter to another function and so on and for example some of these uh, things that you can do with a function reference uh, are used to emulate some behavior for example storing a function object into an object property creates a method so we have one object where one property of this object is actually a function we call that method in, in other object oriented programming languages uh, a method is no more than a property whose value is currently a function or uh, we'll see later that parameters to a function can be used to define callbacks so do some kind of work and when and when you need you can call back this function that are defined to complete some of the work or to customize some of the work uh, the third and last way of declaring a function is even shorter um, with the arrow syntax so we are dropping uh, compared with the uh, version 2a we are dropping the function keyword there is no function here anymore but we are adding an arrow between the parameter list and the open brace it's just a, a for the moment we'll see that just a, a, a small syntax modification inside instead of the keyword function before the parameters we put the keyword arrow after the parameters nothing more hmm? okay so that means uh, uh, it's a more uh, short a shorter version it's a more compact version uh, of the declaration but again it's a function expression 
so the result of the arrow function we call them arrow functions uh, the result of the arrow functions in other languages they call them lambda for example uh, the arrow functions uh, uh, is an expression that will create a new function with this parameter list and this body and the reference to these functions it can be stored into a variable again when we see at the variables inside the problem we don't see the difference between version 1 version 2 and version 3 the classical way the functional expression and the arrow um, function expression they actually are the same they behave in the same way the last one is shorter in many cases it's preferred uh, in some cases it may be difficult to spot so because it doesn't have very strong keyword function so if you are missing the arrow in, in the code, if the, you have a complex expression, the arrow may be uh, not so easy to see. And so it may be at first confusing, but mm, you just don't care. Uh, you just uh, uh, try to write it uh, with, a, with a proper indentation and it will be clear. I, I have to say that currently many functions, most functions, uh, are recommended to be written in the arrow format. Of course, uh, the arrow uh, syntax is a bit uh, uh, different because there is no keyword, and uh, so uh, the list of parameters may uh, may have some shortcuts. For example, if you if you only have one parameter, you can omit uh, the braces, so you can have just a function equal parameter arrow body, and the arrow is uh, binds stricter than the than the equal, so actually it's create a function and then it signs it there. If you have a function with zero parameters or with two or more parameters, uh, then you are forced to use the, the, the braces, of course, the parentheses. And um, this is basically the only, the only shortcut here is when you have one parameter with no default value. But if, if, because if you need a default value like this, uh, you need to have the parentheses. Otherwise, the syntax will be ambiguous. Um, okay. So we, we analyze the parameters of functions. Uh, we spend a word about the return value. We said already at the beginning that a function returns only one value and it will return it with the keyword return, of course. Uh, by default, if you don't return anything, it will the, the value of the function would be undefined, as we can expect. So uh, there is no uh, syntax error if you forget to return. Uh, a value from a function of your of you, or if you return without specifying value it will just take the value undefined uh, you can return only one value but you can pack an, an entire object into one statement so if you want to return uh, for example an array of two elements or an object with many properties uh, in, in the same return statement uh, and then the color of the function can use the destructuring assignment that we saw last time uh, to uh, unpack the, the different values and put them into different variables. Mm. Um, we also have uh, uh, another shortcut for arrow functions. Imagine that the arrow function only contains sorry, one statement that is a return statement. So this is very often, for example, when you are defining mathematical functions. You have a, one parameter and you want to return um, a function that is called uh, depending on the value of the parameter so you only have one statement in, in the braces which is a return of, a, on a, of an expression what you can do in this case is to drop completely the return and the braces so in the in, this, in the second line you see that the, this is the same function the same fourth uh, to the fourth power function which is the shortcut we ha i have only one parameter so i can drop the parentheses i have only one statement uh, that will return a value then i can drop the return and drop the braces so these are a very very compact form of defining a function uh, in this special case uh, when we have a function with only one parameter and uh, only one value that can be computed on the fly without uh, needing more complex statements only one statement uh, remember uh, that this semicolon here is part of the function this semicolon here is part of this assignment so uh, don't uh, uh, 
one, one easy error will be just to forget about the return okay if we just delete the return but we keep the braces we are computing this value and then we are ending the function but this function will return undefined because it's an error uh, it's a function without a return statement so if you drop the return you should always drop the the, um, the braces because then here we only have one expression and we don't have a function body the function body without a return will also be undefined an expression is just the value of, of the expression itself hmm? so braces and return go hand in hand always uh, in JavaScript it's also easy to define uh, a nested function mm, there's no limit in that uh, you know the creating a, a function is just a matter of having an expression I write an expression like I write 3 plus 2 I create 5 I write x arrow x plus 1 I'm creating a function so it's very easy to create functions everywhere so it's not a surprise that we can, can define uh, um, a function inside another function for example so I want to call the hypotenuse from the um, P uh, Pythagoras theorem and so I want to an easy way of computing the square of, of x so I, I inside the function hypotenuse I define a local function a nested function uh, that will be called twice here for computing the square of a and the square of b and then at the end of the function this variable uh, will be forgotten so this function will be destroyed will be reused as, an as any other object I'm defining a function inside another function and this inner function is scoped within the external function so uh, it's only visible from inside the function it will not be visible from outside of course the syntax is uh, uh, you may use the arrow syntax you may use the classical syntax you may use the the functional expression syntax as you like as you prefer all the syntaxes are equivalent you can nest a function def definition inside another function definition at any time there is a one detail that we'll see that will change a bit uh, how we work uh, that we say that this function is not visible outside the big one but this function inside the body of this function here or the body of this function here will have access to the external function so we'll have access to a and b in this case we are not using that but uh, uh, the, the scoping rule is that the uh, outside the external function the inner function is not visible but inside the inner fu function all the variables of the external functions are visible and this has these simple details detail has very deep consequences and uh, these consequences are called uh, closures uh, a closure is uh, uh, a, a strong concept in many programming languages uh, where we have uh, we may have a new um, a new way, let's say, of, 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 of reusing the functions. The, the principles are, are quite easy. Hmm? The idea is that we need a, some definitions in order to get to the point. Uh, every function defines a scope. So the scope is the visibility of the variables that are, or that are declared inside. So the greater function will then uh, read the text. For the moment, just a, a look at the syntax. The greater function is a scope that starts here and finishes there and this scope will contain the parameters name and my name hello the variables defined inside easy then we have a, a nested function here because it's declared with the function expression syntax that opens a new scope and in this internal scope i'm not declaring any new variables but the inner function here can use can have access to a variable declared in the outer scope this is what it means that javascript uses lexical scoping so a function will have access to the variables of the enclosing scope from the lexical point of view 
uh, what is the uh, the alternative uh, but this what is the problem is that the, the this function uh, is only defined here is never run when they call the greater function let's see the greater function just copies a string defines a function and returns the reference to this function the function is defined but is never executed is never run i'm returning a function the function will be called later on when i call the late the function so i'm returning this function that i created here when i call this function hello tom for example which is uh, the return value hello from calling greeter you say that this function creates a function nested function and returns a reference to this nested function this reference is then returned outside and we can call this function when we call this function here which is actually that one the variable my name would not exist anymore because the greeter function has been function call has been completed so i'm calling greeter greeter executes up to the end and the greeter frame is deleted so my name is forgotten hello is forgotten inside the function is destroyed but because i have a reference to a function outside here it's called hello tom so i have a reference to an object a function and this object this function has a reference to this variable and so for the garbage collection rules in, uh, until an object is a reference to another object the second one cannot be deleted cannot be reclaimed this means that uh, this variable my name survives the end of the greeter function will be still alive after this function returns because it's been kept alive by hello tom that refers to this function that in turn refers to my name and every time i call this greeter function i'm calling the function i'm creating a new local variable and this new and i'm creating a new function and this new function will refer to this new local variable it's not the same one it's another new variable that has been created every time and they remember the reference to that so the fact of remembering some object that no, um, is defined in a scope in, a, in an external scope that no longer exists the external scope no longer exists some variables in that external scope will still be remembered by the functions that were defined inside this strange mechanism is called closure and uh, just a warning uh, here uh, what i'm returning to this function is the the function greeter is the is the reference to the function uh, beware not putting some round parameters here because in this case you would call the function and you will it would return a string so if in this case in the orange box i am returning a string and of course with a string i cannot call a function i can remember anything it doesn't remember anything a string it's just a string if i'm returning a function that this function will remember the context in which it was created so when i call the function later the function would remember the context in which it was created this is the key of closures okay so this is a strange definition uh, that you can find in the books uh, closure is a name given to a feature in the language by which a nested function executed ex executed uh, after the execution of the outer function can still access outer function scope mm -hmm. if you read that you don't understand anything but basically it's one of the most important concepts that we have today and because it's the basis for a lot of other stuff um, let's review this code we have the inner scope here we have the outer scope of the greater functions there and uh, this is the the fact that the inner function is using this variable one it's allowed by the language because you can access the enclosing scope and two it will create a closure so a closure is a remembered value 
so at this point what what is happening is that the hello tom function will call this hello function that has been declared there with the remember by remembering my name that was the parameter that was passed here and it was copied to my name when the greeter function was called so in that case it will remember that my name has the value tom and hello jerry we remember that uh, uh, the my name value has been set uh, with the value jerry so in this case we'll print hello tom and the other case will print hello jerry tom and jerry and so we can use uh, this mechanism uh, for different purposes one is uh, uh, quite important is to emulate uh, objects uh, full objects and you know, we are used uh, for example in java that objects have uh, properties but also methods and uh, we want in some way to uh, give access to the properties only uh, through the method that we want so for example we have here the definition of uh, a new counter so we create we define a new object just by using a function this function and, and we use the, the closure mechanism has one nested function get next so a counter is something that has a get next method every time it gets called uh, it will increase the number the value so value is a variable inside the function and the method that we can call is something that will increase the value and return the value just updated uh, we return not the value but the function to increase the value and this function will have a closure over the starting value okay so when we call the counter function and we assign it to count one for example it will execute the counter function the counter function will initialize a new value to zero will uh, create this functional expression to this arrow expression this arrow expression will close over value so we will remember this specific value and uh, we return and of this we return this function that we just created and we just that is closing over value so every time we call count one count one count one which is the result of counter can be called counter is a function that returns a function so this new function count, count one can be called every time we call count one actually we are calling this arrow function and this arrow function will increment the value specific to this function that has been closed over and uh, so we call it count one many times one it counts one two three if we create another counter with the same function uh, every time we call this function of course uh, we will increase another function because when we, when we call counter we are creating a new top level value and a new get next function that will clo close over that specific value so in this way we are we created a, a private value that can, can only be accessed to this method of course this is limited because we only have one method can, that can be called one function that can be called uh, but if we want uh, to access more than one function we can just return an object of more, uh, containing many functions so for example this is an extension of our counter where we have a count method and a reset method the count is the same as before and reset will put the counter back to zero and this behaves in the same way of course we we create the counter so we call the function this function will return an object containing two properties and these two properties are functions so uh, it's an object c c dot count is a property of the object and is also a function and this function has a closure over n also reset is another function which has a closure over the same n is the same n because they were defined in the same body of the function they were defined you see there's a function expression here the function expression there but we are the, the both fun fun functions uh, are inner function inside this outer scope okay uh, so we can call the count method uh, on c and we return zero on d we return zero and if we call on d again we will return one later 
but in the meantime we can reset c so we call the reset function reset method we can call the method uh, and uh, and uh, um, the um, the counter will go back to zero mm -hmm. so in, in a way we created one object that will store some internal state uh, internal properties and that uh, will have some methods that can use that value the nice part is that from c or d we can never we will never access n n is actually hidden from the object because the only thing that have that is visible outside are actually the properties of this object the value the return value is the object and the only visible things are the uh, the variables okay uh, and so we are protecting the variables uh, and uh, we are uh, defining the methods by which the variable can be used uh, this is good for uh, objects that may be used more than once okay so um, we want to create one counter another counter so i'm creating many objects of the same type so we started the, the class today by saying uh, an object is a very, very easy uh, thing in js just open a brace and write the properties in that case you are creating individual objects uh, uh, each one uh, will be different they uh, will have different properties if we want to have a more structure uh, with objects we can create them with functions we don't need classes uh, we don't need new we just create a function that will return a way of handling the values and this is good uh, as i said for creating many objects of the same of the same type but what happens if we want to create an object that we only use once uh, and in this case there's a strange expression in, in JavaScript that is called uh, immediately invoked function expression IIFE IFE. Uh, an immediately invoked function expression is a function expression so like the, here we have a function expression that we start with function and we finish with the closing brace and we call this function immediately so this is an expression like it was uh, called, uh, for example, uh, uh, count. Count is uh, the value of a function expression. We can call it by using the round parameters, para uh, parentheses. And so the same we can do here. This is a function expression. We call it. We have uh, an additional couple of parentheses for, uh, for clarity, for uh, in, in closing the function expression into a parenthesis, but just by showing, okay, I want to apply the call parenthesis onto this value um, and so in this case we are uh, declaring a function and calling it immediately so in this case we are logging a tree on the console so there's nothing special okay or we can also this is an expression and we can uh, store not the value not the function object but the value returned by the function so in this case it will return three so what is the advantage of all these additional syntax just to print a tree or to return a tree is that the a variable is being uh, hidden so from outside this code we can define a lot of uh, variables we can we could define a lot of nested functions and they will be destroyed at the end of the nested function invocation so it's a way of protecting the scope of a block of code that may be a complex block of code but you want, don't want uh, these variables that you're declaring inside to leak outside to be used or to be visible outside mm -hmm. so this is a way of creating a functional expression usually with the, with the closure and only using it once mm -hmm. so for example this is another uh, example of counter that has been defined as an IFE. Uh, so you see that uh, we have a function declared here that will hand end here at this closing brace. And this function is being called immediately. Okay, so we are opening brace here, function definition, function expression, closing this brace that I open there, and then calling the function. This function is exactly the same as before, the one that we use for counter. But uh, uh, at this point, uh, I only create one object C, 
from this function and then it's, uh, it's uh, just one line of code here i cannot reuse it anywhere so i cannot create a second or third uh, uh, object so if i only want to create one object with this behavior i i'm sure i don't need any other ones i don't need to define a name for the function i don't need to uh, make this count and reset uh, uh, properties visible to the outside except the only variable that i needed mm -hmm. so uh, if you want to create a one-off object with its own variables, its own uh, method, but you, you are sure you won't need to reuse it, you can use this strange syntax. Hmm? This, uh, it may be strange at the beginning because it's a closing brace, closing parentheses, open and closing, uh, but uh, it will become family. We will see it worse, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. I will stop here uh, this class and uh, the, 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 the we have a still a small part that will end. It will be easier uh, but i wanted to make this uh, this first video uh, let's say with the um, uh, with the two big big topics uh, of uh, uh, objects and functions together and then we'll see some easy applications of, uh, of objects and functions in that will be practical and can be used uh, later on also in, in the labs and the programming exercises so uh, the first video is about the concepts and the other will be about the uh, applications of these concepts uh, so uh, thank you for listening and sorry for the mistakes in uh, in VS Code before I try to correct them before the next videos. <laughs>